Thank you very much, Doctor. So, uh, yes, my name is Ken LaFave, and uh, I am heading up business activities here in North America for Biomass Heating Solutions Limited. Uh, BHSL is an Irish company. Uh, it was started about 12, 15 years ago. Um, before, I, before I go any further, though, I, I come from a business sales background, and I will try real hard to make sure this doesn't turn into a sales uh, presentation. Um, my, my hope is to actually create a, a dialogue. So if there's something that, that I am going over too quickly or you'd like uh, more clarification on, please don't hesitate to, uh, to speak up. Um, another thing, rule of thumb, I'd like to get an idea on, on who I'm speaking to. Um, our, can I get a show of hands? Who's, who's with uh, uh, NRCS or a similar organization? So good, good, good number. So we do a lot of nutrient management. We do a lot of resource uh, allocation, helping the farmers. Do we have any farmers out here today? Excellent, excellent. Um, as I was, I was telling Chris, and well, and Chris, thank you for inviting us here today. Uh, I am going to know a lot more about the business aspects of this than the technical aspects of the, the nutrient management. So I've got an army of Irish engineers across the ocean that can help me pull together any answers that I can't deliver to you today. Uh, so with that said, um, it's, it's 9 p.m., but I, I don't allow them to sleep. And, and the, hard, the hard part is it's only going to get worse because, which may become evident as we talk, depending on which way the conversation goes, the majority of our, our business activities and efforts right now are concentrated in California. So we've got the five-hour jump, and then we've got the, the three-hour jump. So they, they don't sleep. <laughs> it's, that's, that's fine. Uh, so um, this, is, this is a statistic that I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. And this is kind of, from a global point of view, we understand that we need to, to feed a whole lot more people in a, in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, and we know poultry is a, a phenomenal way to do that as far as the amount of effort, the resources that go into each pound of protein. protein uh, poultry is, is phenomenal at that. Um, so there's, there's the big picture of, of why this is important. But the impetus for this company actually started when the, the, these two farmers in Ireland, these, these brothers, they built a couple brand new sheds and they filled them up with poultry and the state came in and said, that's great, but you can't spread the litter on the land anymore. Uh, so, okay, well, what do we do? Do we go out of business? Do we find another use for the poultry litter? So that's what started this, uh, BHSL and fluidized bed combustion. Anybody familiar with FBC, fluidized bed combustion? Anyone know what it is? I got a couple wobbles. Okay, okay. Um, what BHSL was successful in doing was, was taking an old technology um, and miniaturizing it. Miniaturized it, it's been since 2008. We've been running on a, a couple poultry farms in the UK, um, 150,000 hours of operational time. Um, as in, in the EU, the way that this technology processes poultry litter into energy um, the actual standard around the EU, in the EU, was written around what we're doing. Um, this here is a lovely statistic. Uh, if we could make that happen here in the States, then uh, gosh, it'd be, kind of be a no-brainer as far as implementing this technology. We, we have uh, one demonstration unit operating in the state of Maryland. Uh, it was uh, part of that funding was a grant through the um, uh, USD, or I'm sorry, the Maryland Department of Ag, Innovative Manure, and I always mess up the name of it. But in other words, there's about a million dollars of state money uh, in our demonstration project out in Maryland. We've got an investment of about 2.4 million on top of that. Uh, the challenges, obviously, manure, we've got environmental regulatory issues. Um, poultry production is always low volume, I'm sorry, high volume, low margin. Uh, it can be very energy intensive, and we've got the bird welfare to, to contend with. So dealing with all of these, improving all of those, um, is what our, our, our goal is through implementing the FBC technology. Um, currently, I'm sure you're all very familiar with, with poultry production. Um, the birds go in, you, you heat them uh, in the brooding area as, as much as you have to. As soon as they, they become exothermic, you want to shut that heat off. You want to ventilate as little as possible during these cold weather months. Ventilate enough to keep the birds healthy. It's that balance. You're walking that fine line. It's, it's difficult. 
Um, after the birds are, are, are grown, off to processing, you're, you're spreading the litter on the land. Uh, I think the latest statistic were 18 percent of the land in Maryland can no longer have land applied. And again, a lot of you guys are going to know that number better than I am. Uh, that's going to lead to the water pollution issues we've got in the Bay. And I didn't put this slide together. I think that's probably a bit extreme on the air pollution, but um, nonetheless, the air pollution that results from the ammonia that is created in the houses because of the, the hard environment, um, all of those, those uh, issues with the CO2 from the propane heaters. Uh, here's what we're doing that's different. We're, we're, we've got uh, our little chicks here. Um, first step, we're going to we're going to load the manure from a, a, a flock that's just been processed. That's going to go into a, a storage area that has an, an automated, automated self-loading system. So we go there, we, um, we provide, we, we burn the, the, the poultry litter uh, through a controlled 24-hour monitored system back in Ireland. The heat is supplied through the houses um, and it's, it's Unlimited. Basically, whatever the birds need, whatever is going to be required to give the best uh, environment, is what the, the system is going to be sized to do. Uh, when heat is not required, there is the opp opportunity to do CHP coheat and power, uh, depending on the size of the farm. For instance, the the Murphy farm, we're looking at about a 500 kilowatt thermal unit, which doesn't it doesn't we don't want to really sell that electricity off. It's, it's small enough that it really doesn't make economic sense to, to have that capability put into that project. Um, but it is there from a demonstration point of view to show that we can actually generate electricity from the poultry litter. Uh, and then uh, we're left with the, the nutrients afterwards, the P and the K. So with the improved environment in the house, and we, we can see some, some quicker production times, uh, we're lowering the feed cost. Um, if we can improve and, and meet some of the, the standards that are required, we can uh, make this project eligible for uh, some type of government funding and support. Uh, we've got the lower emissions with the CO2 because we're, we're using these are hot water heaters is all they are. Uh, so we're not burning any liquid propane in there. Uh, improved biosecurity because we, if, when the application applies, we can actually create this, this storage unit so that it's under a, a negative pressure. Uh, the, obviously the surface water because we're not land applying and abundant heat so that we're, we're getting better performance out of the birds. So FBC technology, what, um, what's actually happening here? How do we do this? Fluidized bed combustion is a very forgiving form of, of combustion. The, the poultry litter, we're not doing anything to it. We're not treating it. Uh, we're not uh, preconditioning it. We're simply taking the litter from the, the previous flock and putting it into the automatic loading area. Uh, to, to get the system started, uh, we've got a bed of sand here and we've got some compressed air. Uh, we get this, we pump the compressed air in here, we turn on a diesel burner, we get this up to about 600 degrees Celsius with the diesel. Uh, on the last startup it took about 10 gallons of diesel is all we burned. Um, once we get to that point, the, the bed is hot, uh, we can start injecting the, the, the wet litter. Depending on the moisture, um, I'll show you in another picture. Depending on the moisture content, um, will determines how high we project the, the feed. Uh, because if we, if we put it high, it's going to have a further time to, to dry out as it comes down. Uh, this then becomes self-sustaining. The heat goes out to heat exchangers that will then heat the hot water that can then be used to make electricity or used to heat the houses. Okay, so that, this is kind of an overview of the whole system. We've got um, the litter being fed in here. This is where the actual fluidized bed is. We've got the, the, the combustion taking place here. The hot air, hot gases, everything is going to then transfer over here into the heat exchangers. The heat exchangers then will, again, provide the hot water for the steam to make electricity or go out to the house, uh, well, go into the buffer tank here that would then go out to the farm, go out to the houses. These two bag houses here filter out all the particulates. Uh, this is an incomplete chimney here, flume. But um, when, when, what, we, what we need to do in order to meet the, the standard in Brussels, which we're, we're navigating the Maryland uh, Department of Environment regulations right now, and I'm not anticipating any issue with the permitting there, but that's underway. 
um, what we have to do is get the temperature here at 850 degrees Celsius for two seconds. So if the litter is dropping in and it's in there for two seconds, it's pathogen free, but it's at a, also it's at a low enough temperature that the socks and knocks uh, aren't an issue. So that is what enables us to actually have a very clean emissions profile. Uh, let's see, is there anything else fun in there? Um, steam for electricity, buffer tank. Um, okay, this is a one megawatt thermal sized unit. Somebody had asked how much we burn in a given day. Okay, this, this unit is gonna burn about 10 tons per day. It's gonna be capable of creating about 100 kilowatts of electricity um, or 950 kilowatts thermal for the farm itself. So it, this is sizable. We can go down as low as 250, 300 kilowatts. Um, and we've actually got some designs that we're working on now that are gonna be in excess of 25 megawatts thermal. So that's gonna be capable of generating about 500, I'm sorry, five megawatts electricity. So again, very scalable. It's um, something that's gonna be versatile from a, a farm size scale unit to um, a, a microgrid, if you will, to support a, a wastewater or a, a critical infrastructure for a municipality. Boy, I need glasses. Whew. Okay, um, and these are just some real pictures. Um, this is actually two 500 units side by side there, a um, little bit larger one there. Here's an example of the top loader. Um, imagine that filled with litter. Uh, it simply goes out, scrapes it, loads it onto the conveyor belt, um, and then feeds into the system. Uh, we don't want the farmers to become experts in energy production. Uh, the vast majority of the interaction, intervention that's required is all done in Ireland. And by that, I mean we're, they're adjusting water temp pressures, they're, they're adjusting um, feed rates, they're adjusting fan speeds that all control how the combustion process takes place. The farmer, what he has to do, these are the ash bags. He's got to make sure those are empty, and he's got to make sure this stays full. Uh, just a little bit of a graphic here that, um, depending, again, the versatility of the system, uh, we've got some... There's a, there's a project we're doing in Turkey that is a, a large layer house, and they also wanted us to, to take care of their mortalities. So again, depending on where we interject that biomass in conjunction with the litter, we can also take care of their, their mortalities. So you've got a, a biosecurity benefit there as well. Uh, and then again, the, the, the 850 for two seconds. Uh, out to the houses. Uh, Pipes are run underground, simple hot water radiator, radiators uh, actually deliver the heat. Now, this would be curious. Maybe it's kind of lame to play a video, but <laughs> I think they did a really good job. We'll see if it'll actually work here, though. This is going to describe the, uh, the project out in Dorchester County, the uh, Double Trouble Farm, the, uh, the Murphys. We're headed to Dorchester County, where a poultry grower is pioneering a solution to a persistent Eastern Shore problem. On this dreary late November morning, Murphy Farms in Dorchester County is in transition. Earlier this week, the latest crop of chickens made their exit, off to Mount Air Farms for processing. Now, a cutting-edge system designed to manage the tons of manure they left behind is about to make an entrance. This is the elevator that I was speaking about earlier that actually brings the manure up and takes it into the combustion chamber. If all goes as planned, soon it will be used as fuel. I believe this is going to be the game changer right here. For poultry growers like Bob Murphy and his sons Brad and J.D., the rules of the game have been changing for a while now. Farmers have always used manure as a free, nutrient-rich fertilizer. But in recent decades, scientists have found that long-term application has saturated the soil on some eastern shore poultry farms. The main offender is phosphorus. Plants are slow to use it allowing it, in some cases, to escape the farm and make its way into the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries, where it spells disaster for aquatic life. It's gonna be a time when we're not gonna be able to use it on farms. I got one farm right now that I can't apply no manure to at all. 
State regulations now limit how much manure farmers can spread on crops. About 18 percent of farm fields have restrictions. But of course, the birds still produce it. Each year, eastern shore farmers empty about 330,000 tons of poultry litter from their chicken houses. Bob's hoping this fluidized bed combustion unit, engineered and shipped from Ireland, could be a bay-friendly way to get rid of it. We're going to take the manure, we're going to put it into the unit. It's got a fluidized bed. We're actually going to burn the manure. The heat generated will be pumped back into the chicken houses in the form of radiant heating, eliminating the need for propane. The rest of the energy will be converted to electricity and sent back to the grid. The only byproducts are ash and a little sand, and the manufacturer claims it's so efficient, the emissions are mostly water vapor. I'm excited. Can't wait to, to light her off. And once they do, in theory, Bob and his sons shouldn't have to touch it. Any parameter changes that need to be done can be done from Ireland. But first, a team of Irish engineers, overseen by supply chain manager Michael McHenry, is here in the States working out the kinks. What we like to see is a machine running nice, constant levels, always the same temperatures. So the more even the machine runs, it, cleans, it burns cleaner, and it gives a more even heat distribution. And that takes a steady stream of chicken litter. This is the area where our manure will be stored. And as a machine senses that it needs manure, to run, this loader will go back, it will collect the manure, bring it up, automatically will take it in and feed the machine. Today, they're calibrating with wood chips. And by late December, it's up and running, consuming 8 to 10 tons of litter a day. And the heat produced should create a nicer environment for the birds. It's going to be a much drier atmosphere. We will not have the the heat coming off the propane heaters will have a CO2 problem. That's going to be gone. The ammonia is going to be gone. There's going to be absolutely probably no ammonia at all. Over the next year, Dr. Jonathan Moyle with the University of Maryland Extension will be testing those claims, comparing birds grown with the new system to chickens raised the traditional way. My role in this is to look at bird performance. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that the birds grow as good or better. The project has taken three years and about three million dollars to complete. About a million came from the state of Maryland. BHSL, the Irish company that makes it, picked up the rest of the tab. The company's installed several in the UK, but this is the first in the United States. This is going to transform the way chicken is grown. Basically, up to now, we produce chicken. That's our core product. But now the fuel, the, the byproduct from that process, is also a resource for the farm. And when you put it through this combustion technology, you get the energy needs for the farm. And then you have an ash, which is a fertilizer value at the back end. To date, the Maryland Department of Agriculture has awarded grants to six different projects like this one. All of them aim to provide a better way to manage manure. We don't expect that all of them will be 100% successful, but if we can just get two or three that really work well, then that will give opportunities, I guess, for farmers to actually choose what works best for them. The hope is that as the technology is tested and perfected, the price will drop. New solutions sorely needed to sustain a growing industry and a way of life. That's what makes the Eastern Shore is poultry. I mean, it's here and it needs to be here to stay and we need all the support we can get from state and local and government officials to, to help us. Because you take poultry off the shore, you might as well pack it up. The shore's gonna be history, I can tell you. Okay, so the surprise is the fun stuff that comes in the litter. Um, I, I fully believe in that, you know, we've, we've got to show our good and our bad and be very transparent. Um, this stuff here, uh, and, and any of you farmers know, you know, you, you throw a chain off a piece of equipment, you, you drop a bolt, it, it's in a pile of litter. It, you might take a minute to, to dig it out, but by and large, a lot of stuff gets left behind. And, the machine was not made to handle this stuff. So it, it, it has caused us some, some headaches and, and a lot of money over the, the course of the demonstration project. But it, because we have run a couple flocks through, we, we, everybody's educated now on, on what type of maintenance, what, what, how you need to treat the litter a little bit kinder, if you will. Um, we, we haven't had any major issues uh, in, in quite, a, quite a while. This is actually a 
about a four and a half, five inch pipe that in 150,000 hours of operation in 11 machines around the world has never ever broke. But we got it to break here. So it's, uh, I, I don't know if that's an accomplishment or. Um, so what, what have we done? How, where are we at now? Um, the, the demonstration project is still well underway. But one of the things was, well, you know what? We went out and got an 800 pound magnet. And, and that has helped immensely. Um, the integrator, we're working with, uh, with Mount Air. Um, this was uh, their, their comment sheet uh, the, just last week. So we're, we're in houses two and four. And we're, the, the conditions that day, they were, they were measuring uh, 40 parts per million on the ammonia in one and three and 10 parts in uh, two and four. So by using that dry heat, we're making a big difference in, in the birds, in the environment. And hopefully at the end of the flock, we'll see that. Obviously in summer months, the, the, the impact is not gonna be as profound, uh, but here we're, we're definitely, we're on the right step, right in the right direction. Um, this, this is the data that's coming out of the UK. And again, this, is, this, this data, actually I pulled this off of a, a, a presentation from one of, our, our, one of the presentations that was given in Europe. Um, so you know, obviously the, some of these items are not gonna be as, as pertinent here. Um, one of the big issues, one of the big pushes right now is, is phosphorus recovery uh, for, again, they're, they're estimating depleted by 2030. Um, couple, but as far as this profile here, I, I think ultimately we're gonna end up pretty close to that. We're not quite seeing these numbers here. Um, if you're not familiar in, in the UK, they do a clean out after every flock. Uh, so they've got new wood chips going in at every flock. They've, um, and they've got concrete floors so there, we've, we've got some differences. It's gonna, we, we need to still prove out that we can get the zoological improvements here as they are getting in, uh, in Europe. Um, yes, um, so as my ineptitude when it comes to the nutrients becomes more and more evident, I would encourage anybody that's got further questions. Well, one, I can, I can please reach out to me and I can, I can find what you need. But uh, Mark Ritter at, um, Ryder, excuse me, at uh, Virginia Tech, has been working with the, the ash product for a number of years. And I, I reached out to, to Mark prior to, to being here today, but we weren't able to connect. I was just hoping to get his latest and greatest on, on his efforts there. So there is university work being done on, on that level. The, the other, th well, actually, let me just get ahead of myself. This, this is what we're actually seeing coming out of the, um, the Murphy Farm. Um, our, our original litter numbers, uh, this, this is data that was collected as part of the demonstration project uh, with the University of Maryland and uh, AgriLabs. And what we're seeing on an average as far as the, the bed ash, potassium, phosphorus, oh, phosphorus, potassium, and then on the, on the fly ash. So it, it looks like if you look at that, we had one really low one there and one really low one there. And I'm not sure people smarter than I would be able to noodle that through. Uh, with, with data, we were successful in uh, working with the state, uh, Maryland Department of Ag, to have the, the ash classified as a soil amendment. Uh, we, we, did have it, uh, we did have our first sales that occurred over, over the spring. Gentleman uh, in Dorchester County was using it as a soil amendment. I'm sorry, using it for a soy, um, soybean crop. And uh, I, I sent him over the lab data and he sent it to his nutrient management uh, contact. And he came back and he goes, well, how much did you want for that, Ken, per ton? I said, well, $65 a ton, Tommy. And he goes, well, but it doesn't, it's the same. Let's see if I can go back. He goes, but it's, it's the same as, as litter. And I said, no, 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 wait a minute. You've got to look at the next two sheets. And once we realized, that we made sure we were talking about apple to apple, he, he called me back and he goes, okay, I understand now. $65 a ton. I, you know what? I'll let you take that back. How much do you want for it? I'll pay you more. So he, the concentrations and what it did for him, it, he said it very much performed better than commercial fertilizers, um, and he wants more for next year. So I think that's a pretty good endorsement as far as how he was able to apply it and the results that he got from it. From it. 